Hey everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Welcome to what is probably going to be the final vlog of 2022 and it feels really weird saying that <laughs> because it's currently Thursday the 22nd of December and obviously Christmas hasn't even happened yet <laughs> but it will have happened by the time this vlog goes live so I don't really know what's going to be in this vlog. I just knew that I wanted to do a vlog to finish off <laughs> the year so I think at some point I I am going to do a book haul within this vlog because I got a few books for my birthday last weekend and then I might get some books for Christmas, I don't know, <laughs> but I thought I would talk through any books that I do get within the next like few days. I also have some fun stuff planned for after Christmas so I thought that would be quite fun to vlog. I don't know whether I'm actually gonna vlog on Christmas day because I don't want that pressure, I want to just be able to relax <laughs> and spend time with my family. The plan actually for Christmas Day is that we're going to spend the morning here at the flat and then my mum doesn't finish work until I think the afternoon. She's a nurse so she's working on Christmas Day but I think we're going to go around in the evening and my sisters are going to be there and we're going to play some board games and have some food and then on Boxing Day we're driving up to my partner's family. Basically the next week is going to be really busy <laughs> so I don't know how many updates for this vlog I'm going to be able to do but I thought I would attempt a vlog anyway <laughs> and if there's enough footage then obviously I can get this vlog out and yeah round off the year I also have so much filming that I need to do <laughs> over the next few days because it's end of year content time <laughs> so I need to film my favourites of the year, my most disappointing books of the year and then I also in the new year need to do my reading stats. There's also so, so many other videos that I want to film. I want to do a series roundup as well. That might be the video that I film tomorrow because I finish at half 12 tomorrow. They're giving us the afternoon off. So I feel like I'm getting four hours back <laughs> that I wouldn't have had otherwise. So I want to use that time to be productive. However, I also need to go and do our final Christmas shop. And I want to bake some blondies as well because, you know, I'm in the mood to bake. It's Christmas. Christmas. In terms of reading updates, I'm not actually reading anything at the moment because I finished a book last night and I did want to talk to you about it actually because I was obsessed <laughs> with this book. As soon as I heard the synopsis, I knew I had to read it because it's a very loose, legally blonde retelling. I mean, it's not really a retelling, but it's loosely based on legally blonde and it was not the best written book that I've ever read, but honestly, this book was exactly what I wanted to be reading <laughs> right now. So it's called Tis the Season for Revenge and it's by Morgan Elizabeth I think is the author's name and yeah like I said it's loosely inspired by Legally Blonde because it's about this woman who she's been dating this guy for around four years and she's convinced that he's about to propose to her. However she ends up getting dumped on Halloween and this guy is awful. He tells her that she's not marriage material Material, and he says a load of other really really horrible stuff to her and she gets drunk with her friends and decides that she's gonna get revenge. <laughs> so she starts dating his boss so that she can get an invite to the company Christmas party and it's all about her getting revenge on this guy. But then real feelings start to come into play because she ends up falling for this guy, the boss. And I had such a good time with this. It wasn't the best writing. I have to say and some of the dialogue was a little bit cheesy. Also I really don't like it when characters in a romance novel call each other baby. It's like a little pet hate of mine. It just it, it doesn't work for me. However generally the vibes were there. It felt like an early noughties or late 90s rom-com movie and yeah I had a good time with it. I gave it four stars because my only complaint was the the villain of the story started to feel a little bit cartoonish towards the end and I didn't like that. I felt like it was a little too over the top but otherwise if you're still looking for a holiday romance to read then I would recommend this. Obviously by the time this vlog goes live I think it's going to be nearly new year but I read this in like a day or two because I couldn't put it down. <laughs> I think it's actually a companion book within this wider series. I hadn't read any of the other books within the series and I still 
still understood everything. So yeah, I finished that last night and I don't know what else I want to read <laughs> because I haven't really planned for anything, well, reading wise for the end of the year. I've started thinking about what books I want to read next year, but I haven't really planned for anything for, yeah, the last week of the year, other than I am going to be reading one of my boyfriend's favourite books over Christmas because we're going to buddy read it together. I might try and find like a really short Christmas novella that I could read this evening because I do still have a Kindle Unlimited subscription, but it ends on Christmas Day. <laughs> so it's almost like perfect timing. It's almost like the universe is telling me that I need to read some Christmas romances from KU this week before my subscription runs out. So I might have a look on there tonight and see what I can find. But then I also might film tonight because I'm starting to feel a little bit stressed <laughs> with how much filming I need to do before the end of the year if I want to do all of the content that I want to do. I don't know. I feel like I'm starting to ramble now. So I am going to wrap up this intro and I will see you once I've decided what I want to read. <laughs> I have officially finished work for the year. I'm not back in now until the 3rd of January. So feeling good. I'm not feeling like super festive yet, but I feel like that's gonna come. <laughs> I was tempted to watch a Christmas movie this afternoon. I was meant to pre-film <laughs> a load of content, but I'm sat on the sofa and I've got a bit of a stomach ache. So I'm thinking instead I might plan content while I watch a Christmas movie. I still need to plan out my best and worst books of the year lists. So I might do that <laughs> this afternoon and then I'm going to be doing some baking tomorrow. I might also try and pre-film some content tomorrow, but it's Christmas Eve, so I don't know whether I should just relax <laughs> and wait until after Christmas. It's the end of the year Everywhere on TV Couples and Christmas trees Gift wrapping and cheer Just the worst time to be with a someone special Hi everyone, so it is now, I think, the 28th of December. Is it Tuesday? Let's check. No, it's not. It's Wednesday. <laughs> See, it's that time in between Christmas and New Year where I have no idea what day it is or what's happening. <laughs> I'm very tired right now and I'm struggling to get my words out. But yeah, I've had a really good Christmas. It's been a really nice few days. It's just been really busy and I'm quite tired now. <laughs> so I think the plan now that we're home is to chill <laughs> for today and tomorrow. I do want to try and film a video tomorrow, maybe even two videos videos if I can and then on Friday the day before New Year's Eve we're going into Oxford for the day to do a bit of shopping. We did actually pop into Waterstones today as well because it's the last day of their hardback sale that they usually do around Boxing Day and I did acquire a few books. I will show you them at the end of the vlog. I want to do a big book haul at the end of this vlog as like a way to round out the year <laughs> if that makes sense. I've got a lot of books this month because it was my birthday a few weeks ago and then I didn't actually get any books for Christmas I don't think but yeah I bought a couple in the Boxing Day sale and then because we're going to Oxford on Friday see I keep forgetting <laughs> what day it is because we're going to Oxford in a few days I'm possibly going to buy more books then so I'll do a book haul at the end of the vlog just so I can talk about them all together. I have just finished filming my best books of the year video which should be going live after this one so look out for that when it does go live whenever I get around to editing it because honestly I have been filming for the past three hours and I'm not looking forward to editing <laughs> that footage but I realized yesterday I never actually told you about the book that I'm currently reading so I'm currently reading Cat Lady by Dorno Porter and 
I'm not sure how I feel about this book. <laughs> it's a very frank writing style. It's very direct and blunt. And because it's told in the first person perspective, sometimes the main character doesn't come across as very likeable. But I don't know if I like that. I have had a very mixed experience with Dorno Porter because I really liked So Lucky but I didn't like The Cows to the point where I think it was one of my worst books of 2020. It's one of the few books that I've given one star because I really didn't like it. And it's a difficult one because I feel like the elements that I didn't like were more to do with decisions that the characters made within the plot, not to do with the writing style. I actually really like Dorno Porter's writing style. But yeah, I'm feeling mixed things about this so far. We're basically following a main character called Mia who's a cat lady so she has her cat Pigeon who she adores. This cat is the most important person in her life. It feels a very slice of life but we're basically following this main character and her thoughts and feelings and yeah I'm halfway through and this could end up either being two stars or five stars. I do like the way that this book is talking about how the term cat lady is often used in a negative way but actually this main character feels like she is better suited to being alone with her cat. It's, yeah, it is quite interesting, I think, the way that it's talking about that. There's just been a few moments that have made me cringe a little bit. So yeah, I will hopefully finish this on the train to Oxford tomorrow and then I can let you know my final thoughts before I wrap up the vlog. It's December, you'll barely remember Think of our friendship, a part of my heart rips I want you to know, even though it doesn't show I want you to know, I miss you When our friends about you, they know that it's all true They call me a fool cause I still wanna be friends with you I want you to know, even though it doesn't show I want you to know I miss you Oh, miss the days we prinkled each other Oh, miss the days we played sports together You will remember these memories But I'll make sure that I'll keep them with me Goodbye, goodbye, good friend, goodbye Miss the days we laughed together Goodbye, good friend, goodbye I'll miss the days we sang together So it is now Friday. I am back from Oxford and I will go through my book haul in a second. But first, I wanted to talk to you about Cat Lady by Dorno Porter because I did finish this on the train home and I don't know what to tell you because I loved parts of this book, but also I really hated parts. So I don't know how I'm going to rate it. I think I might end up giving it a three stars because there were some parts that I really liked, like the social commentary. I really enjoyed that aspect, but there were also some very graphic descriptions of stuff which I don't think were needed. I think they were only there for shock value rather than because they added something to the plot. Also, can I just say that the marketing for this book is not very accurate in my opinion because I've seen so many descriptions of this book that have said it's really funny and really humorous, but I didn't find that at all. This was really sad and frustrating and it made me feel really angry at times. So I don't know why it's being promoted as a funny book because I would 
really not recommend reading this if you're in a really bad place with your mental health because it was quite overwhelming at times. It reminded me a little bit of Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. I actually have that book right here because my mum bought it me for my birthday. I have actually read this book. I read it years ago, I think, when it first came out. But yeah, Cat Lady reminded me a lot of this book and also The Cactus by Sarah Hayward. Is that the name of the author? I think it's one of those books where you either connect with the story or you don't. And I didn't really connect with it. So yeah, I think I am probably going to give it three stars. I feel quite comfortable with that rating. Content warnings for cancer and also death of a parent. And I also wanted to mention, because I know with a book like this, some people would want to know in advance if anything happens to the cat. And I don't feel like I can say, because any answer that I give could be considered a spoiler. So if you do want to know, just leave me a comment down below and I will reply to people individually. But yeah, I don't feel like I can say anything without spoilers. But if you do want to be spoiled, then I'm happy to let you know. So yeah, glad I finished this before the end of the year because I didn't really want to roll it over into 2023. I did also read an arc of this through NetGalley. I think I forgot to say that. I read it on my Kindle. It did come out a few months ago. So I'm glad that I finally read this so I can finally get my review live. I did want to quickly finish this vlog just by going through my book haul from the past month because I've somehow acquired I think 15 books around that. I think it's between 10 and 15. I haven't counted yet. <laughs> but technically some of these books I have already read so it's not like I'm adding books to my TBR. For my birthday my partner got me the Broken Binding special editions of the Winnowing Flame trilogy by Jen Williams. So the first book is The Ninth Rain and I love these hardback editions. I read these through my library so I never actually actually bought them physically but these editions are so pretty. I'm just going to show you quickly the hardcover on this because it's got this design. Is that the right word? I'm not going to hold it up actually because I feel like it's reflecting in my ring light but yeah this is one of my favourite series so I'm really happy to own physical copies. I really like the sprayed edges on these as well. My mum also got me Matthew Perry's memoir for my birthday day and I'm really interested in this. I've heard good things I think so far. I was going to listen to the audiobook while I read physically and just see how I get on with it. I've heard that it's quite sad in places and it's quite difficult to read but Friends was one of my favourite TV shows when I was growing up and I do re-watch it every so often because it's on Netflix so I'm really interested to see how I get on with this. Also for my birthday my sister got me Betty by Tiffany McDaniel which I've heard really good things about. I think this is based on her mother's life and it follows this woman called Betty who was born in a bathtub in 1954 to a Cherokee father and a white mother and she was the sixth of eight siblings and yeah I've heard that it's quite sad but it's basically following this woman throughout her life. Really interested in this. Like I said I've only heard amazing reviews. The December book for the Goldsboro Sci-Fi Fantasy Fellowship subscription also arrived on my birthday so I'm counting this <laughs> as a birthday present but the December book as you can probably see was City of Last Chances by Adrian Tchaikovsky I think is how you pronounce the author's name. I've never read anything by this author but my partner is a huge fan of his books so I'm really interested in this one. I don't know much about it it says that it's set in this place called Ilmar. It says here that it's the worst place in the world and the gateway to a thousand worse places. I don't even know who the main character is that we're following this. I don't think it says. I think it is fantasy. It says it's fantasy on the back but I mean the cover looks amazing. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see that because of my ring light but it has the most beautiful stenciled edges. I have actually skipped the 
January book for Goldsboro, so I can hopefully try and catch up on the books that I've got so far, I think. I am going to try and read this within the first two months of the year because of the books that I've got so far from Goldsboro, this is the one that I'm most excited about. I also picked up a couple of books in the Waterstones at half price at hardback sale, and the first book that I saw was Little Prisons by Iona Bannister, which has the cutest cover. Let's be honest, I bought this because it has a cat on the cover, <laughs> but also the plot sounds really interesting. It sounds like the kind of book that's very character driven and there isn't really much plot, but I think it's about these women who live in this apartment block in London and it's about the isolation that they feel and through small acts of kindness they help each other to rebuild their lives. So it sounds like it's going to be sad but possibly hopeful and heartwarming. I also picked up An Every Morning The Way Home It Gets Longer and Longer by Frederick Backman, who is one of my favourite authors. I've been meaning to read more of his books for a while because so far I've read Bear Town, A Man Called Uwe, and Anxious People, and I really enjoyed most of them. Anxious People wasn't really my kind of thing, even though I did enjoy certain elements, but A Man Called Uwe is one of my authors time favourite books. So I'm really interested in reading more of his novels. I also picked up today another Frederick Backman book. So I've never actually seen this one in a bookstore, but I spotted Brit Marie was here in this small independent bookshop in Oxford. And yeah, I thought I'd give this a go. I haven't heard many reviews for this, but I think this is going to be quite similar to Cat Lady and Eleanor Oliver fun is completely fine. I feel like it's that kind of vibe. Also from Waterstones I picked up Notes on an Execution by Dania Kukafta and Godsmersham Park by Jill Hornby. So these are the books of the month for January. I think this is the thriller book of the month and this is the fiction book of the month. I hadn't actually heard of this one but it seems like it's about Jane Austen. It sounds like it's historical fiction and it's about a woman who becomes a governess to someone within the Austin family. Then she meets Henry and Jane Austen, who are brother and sister, and she immediately becomes interested in both of them, or both of them take an interest in her. Then Notes on an Execution is about a guy who is currently on death row, but it says here that this is not his story, it's the story of the women who survive. The final book in this stack is Fool's Errand by Robin Hobb, which is book one in the Tawny Man trilogy and book seven in the Realm of the Outlings. I'm currently listening to this audiobook. I actually mentioned this recently in my January TBR video, so I'll leave that linked in the cards if you wanted to check that out, if you'd like to hear more about this book, but I'm enjoying this so far more than I was expecting, considering that I didn't really love Assassin's Quest, which was the last book that I read in this series that follows this main character Fitz. I think that's everything that I wanted to say in this update, so I'm going to wrap things up here and say a Happy New Year if you're watching this in 2023. I am going to try and edit this vlog tonight so I can get it live tomorrow, <laughs> but um, yeah, I hope everyone had a great Christmas if you were celebrating. I hope you have a lovely new year and I am gonna go and try and find places for these books but I might need to wait until the new bookcase arrives because I have ordered a new bookcase. It should be arriving on the 2nd of January so these books won't be clearing up the place for long but yeah thanks again for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and click subscribe if you would like to see more videos from me but otherwise I will see you next year. <laughs> Bye!